everybody. Welcome to $10 Quilt for June. Happy to be here. Yeah, we hope we'll be seeing you really, really soon. Things are sounding a little encouraging for maybe some opening in June, but we're not counting any chickens. I'm knocking on wood. No, <laughs> absolutely not. So we have quite a few products to show you today and a couple of demos. The first we have is from a company called Purple Hobbies, I believe it is what it's Purple Hobbies, and they do all of their printing 3D. So these are 3D printed objects, which I find so it's interesting. It's amazing. And when you hear about some of the things they make, that they can do, printing. yeah, it's so cool. So the first one is called the Third Hand Binding Folding Clip. It's phenomenal. We have a, a demo that we're going to attach to this movie just coming right up. They're great. Um, at first, I was a little skeptical. One of our customers told them, us about them, and it looked like it'd be okay, but we got it and tried it out, and it's really, really good. It's very cool. And the same applies to our binding wheel that we also have a demo for you. Um, it looks like a little teeny tiny miniature Ferris wheel, but it's a very handy tool like to have. Like it just for that? Yes, exactly. Sure it's it's very handy. You can play with it. <laughs> so we're going to show you that demo now. So now I'm going to show you the um, third hand binding tool that we have uh, discovered. It was on suggestion of a customer of ours and we are so very grateful because it's a wonderful tool. It is 3D printed, which is kind of something cool. It's a newer thing that has uh, started to take off. So what it is, is it's a, um, an extra tool that you can attach to your ironing board to help you fold your binding in half and press it without having to fiddle with your hands so much. So as you can see, it's just a little piece of plastic. It's got a, a slider on it. So you can, depending um, on the width of your ironing board, you can adjust it. And then it has a little wing nut so you can tie it tight. This end, you can see where the fabric goes. So I'm gonna feed the fabric in and then slide it out. I will show you. So I'm gonna tighten it up here and then tighten up the wing nut. Then I'm gonna start the fabric. I'm gonna fold it in half and just push it through. The slot in the top there will help you if you cannot get the fabric through. You can, I managed to do so, but you can take a pin and the pin will help you just pull it through a little further. But it worked out, it usually works. I've tried it a few times now and it works pretty well each time. So you get it all lined up just where you need it to be. Then, and I've got my iron over the fabric. You get your iron out of the way. Line up your fabric. And then you place your iron down. And you just simply pull the fabric through. It, the tool folds it in half for you. And you can just iron miles and miles of binding if you want to. And you just keep going and going. And if you're worried about your ironing board getting hot in the one spot where your iron is, you can slide your iron over. You can keep your iron moving. It really doesn't matter which way you do it, but the result is always a beautifully folded in half piece of binding. You can cut it at two and a half. You can cut it at two and a quarter. It's entirely up to you. Once you've got your binding all made, we have another little new invention or a new gadget to help you keep your binding in check while you're sewing it onto your quilt. It is called a binding wheel. It looks like a little toy Ferris wheel. And it's also 3D printed, just like I um, mentioned with the third hand binding guide. This also has a slot in the center of it. And what the purpose of this is, is to feed your binding into it, which the first little feed is a bit tricky, but not too bad. As you can see, I've got it fed in there. And then you simply wind your binding onto it. So you just feed it on there. And you can do as long as it needs to be. You piece all your bindings together and keep feeding and feeding and rolling and rolling. And when you're all done, you've got your binding ready to go. So you set this on the floor. I can't do that because you won't be able to see it, but you set it on the floor just to the right of your sewing machine. And then you can wheel it off as you need to attach it to your quilt. So just, again, it's almost like a third hand as well, or a third and fourth hand. Um, it prevents you from rolling over your binding with your chair. It prevents you from getting snagged in it and tripping on it. It prevents you from your binding going under your project and you sewing it to the back of your quilt. It just keeps your binding neat and tidy. It doesn't get dirty rolling all over the floor. The cat is not going to chase it across the room and it's always just gonna be right where you need it. It makes it very easy to put binding on. So um, both of these uh, tools are $39.99 and um, they are wonderful to have. Oh, pardon me. The third hand gadget is $19.99 and the binding wheel is $39.99.
So these are both on our website and you can check them out there. Okay, I also have a new to us product. Um, we had our hearts sent, uh, set on making this beautiful quilt you see over the table, and we'll show you that in a minute. Um, and we wanted to put a scalloped edge on it just because it adds so much to the quilt. So we were looking around for um, various tools that would allow us to put scallops on um, our quilt edges. So we came up with this uh, tool that is from Quilt in the Day, and it is called Scallops, Vines, and Waves. And you can see from all the markings on there, we've got lots and lots of options. And it also makes three different types of curves. So we can put scallops on the border of our quilt, waves or vines. And um, I'm just going to show you those three different options first. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see. So this is the vines option that allows you to put a nice curved vine all around the outside border and applique leaves, flowers, whatever you want to make an artistic impact. The center one is the waves, um, uses the waves template, and you can see the waves gently curve out and in. And that is uh, what we use the waves one for. The third one here is the scallops, and all of these curves are exactly the same. They all go out and come to a point in before you go out to the next scallop and around a nice gentle curve around the corner. So today I'm going to show you how to do the scallops um using this ruler but the vines and waves are done in basically exactly the same just use a different side of the ruler the markings across the top are for the vines and it goes from four inches out to nine inches and that's the length of the arc the bottom is for using the scallop to make the scallops and those go from five inches out to nine inches as well um, so we've got a demo about that and we'll just go to that right now Okay, so we have got a finished quilt here except for the binding. So this has been fully quilted and uh, with the backing. So you can either draw your scallops on the quilt after it is quilted or you can draw them on just the top. I would highly recommend doing it after it is quilted. Your quilt's going to be much more stable. Your long armor will thank you and if you quilt it yourself you'll thank yourself because it's much easier to deal with a rectangular piece of fabric than it is with one with a nice scalloped edge. So quilt up your quilt and then you're ready to do your binding. The first thing you're going to do, just reaching over here, is to mark a diagonal from where your inner piece quilt matches, meets your border out to the outside edge. So I'm just using a um, friction pen here. You can use whatever kind of marking you prefer. And we're just gonna draw the diagonal on there to the outside edge. So we got that marked. And then we're gonna get our scallop template. So you can see here again all the markings. We're going to be using this bottom edge for the scallops and we've got a line here that says line up with the outside edge of the quilt. That's what we use to position the scalloped edge. Um, when I go, first thing I do is mark, uh, measure the width and length of the quilt. This quilt is 51 inches wide and when I go into this nice book of instructions here, I can see right at the back here we have this lovely chart that shows you the um, length minus four inches. You have to remember to take off that four inches. So we've got 51 minus four is 47. They don't have a measurement for 47. So we go to the next closest measurement. So 48 inches tells me we're gonna be making number of scallops is six scallops and the length of the scallop is eight inches. So we're gonna be making six eight inch scallops across this side. Um, where we account for the difference in measurement is in the center scallop. So I'm going to be making all the scallops the same and then we'll take out that extra measure in the center scallop and you won't even notice the difference. They're so close. So using that, I know I'm going to make six, oops, I'm going to keep this here so you can see it better, six eight inch scallops. So we find the eight inch line and I'm just going to mark that with a little piece of painter tape just because it's so much easier to see it at a glance where you want to put your um, markings for your for your quilt. Um, you can use a post-it note, you can use glow line tape, whatever you prefer. So now I'm going to start marking my scallops. So I'm going to take that line, measure it up on, match it up on the edge, and then I'm going to match the point of the painter tape here to that diagonal line. And I'm going to draw my first scallop with my friction pen. So just to that 
and then just gonna make a little extra mark there. Okay, there's scallop number one, and then I'm gonna line up the next one. I'm gonna just do three quickly here. There's number two. Okay, and then once I've got those three marked, I'm going to go to the other end, if, if Shannon, <laughs> the camera girl, can follow me, and we're going to start the first one from this end. So we're going to meet in the middle. And again, just get that lined up there. Mark that. And next one. Okay, this is the last, quote, normal one. And then I'm going to center this between the two points, basically so. And I'm going to do those last ones. Okay, and there is your scallops. Um, I hope you can see my drawing line okay. But at a, from a distance, they look absolutely equal. Can you see, see it we all really right? You really can't see the drawing line, but just trust us. There's a, there's a yeah, drawing line Yeah, I should right have used black there. or something. Yeah, there's okay. the the line okay so you've got the lines all on there and then you're going to take scissors or a small rotary cutter and trim along those lines and you're ready to bind with bias binding and there you have a beautiful quilt so now you've seen how you use that scallop ruler and we're going to show you this beautiful quilt this is the one that inspired everything um, we saw a quilt similar to this when we were at market, which seems like a hundred years ago. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So there is our beautiful sanctuary quilt. And this uses the scallop ruler to make this lovely um, scalloped edge around the quilt. Um, this uses a layer cake. The um, fabric is sanctuary from Three Sisters. And then we've done this um, lovely uh, scalloped edge with the bias binding and it finishes it off beautifully. So the scallop ruler um, is $34.99, less your 20%. And the kits for the sanctuary quilt, you got it? Did you? Are, they are not discounted because these are brand, brand new. Um, so they are regular price. They're $129.99. And you will find these on our website under the kit section rather than in the $10 quilt section. Okay, a few other things to tell you tell you about today. We have these cute, cute, cute little kits. It's called Bird on a Wire. As you can see, it's just the birds on wires and they're absolutely adorable. It's made with wool felt and the kit comes with everything you need. It's all the fabrics, the felt to complete the, including the applique and the background, back and the binding as well as all the batting really embroidery floss it's and got, the templates. It's wow. got everything you need. So it is 13 by 15 and the price is only $39.99 less your 20%. Um, pretty awesome actually. Just a little fun project you can take on the road if you get to go on the road, which hopefully we will say. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, now the next thing is a really great tool to help just make your quilts the best they can be. This is called the Foolproof Color Wheel Set. Um, most of you will know where the color wheel is. It's a, a setup with a wheel. It shows you what colors are analogous, what colors are complementary, and so on and so forth, so that you can put the best, um, raise your quilts to the next level. So this is great if you're not blessed with a brilliant color sense. And we have the color wheel inside. Then there's a little pocket here. This holds, I think it's 10 different discs that have um, cutouts on them. So there's a little um, peg in the middle of the color wheel there. And we just pop the disc on top of that. And you can spin the disc then. And this is, disc number one is the direct complement. So this is showing you which colors are directly complementary. And you know these are always going to sing together to make a beautiful, beautiful quilt. Um, the second disc is uh, the color triad. And this has three 
colors that are equidistant. And again, those are gonna just pop together to make a great quilt. And all 10 discs are different and all 10 discs will show you which are gonna work beautifully together. I'm not gonna try and pry that off. I'll do that when I can uh, lift it off gently. Um, and they just slide back in the pocket when you are finished using them. So the complimentary color wheel is 32.99. And um, it's a great set to have with you when you are shopping for fabric or um, auditioning fabrics that you might have at home. It shows you what's it's really gonna work well for you. Next up, we have some awesome coasters to share with you. They're from the, the uh, Laurel Birch. Laurel Birch was oh, a, a fantastic artist back in the day. She unfortunately passed away, but her artwork continues on through coasters and um, socks, bags, oh, fabric, awesome. all sorts of different stuff, things. Yeah. So this first one is called Horses of Fire. They have um, yeah. cork on the back and there's ceramic. The next one we've got Dogs and Doggies. Running out of hands here. Songbirds. And the Indigo Cat Family. So these add just a really neat pop of color to your house, your sewing room, your bedroom, wherever you want them. A couple other ones. This and is Fantastic Cats. And this one is Blossoming Florals. So all everything for every different type of interest so you can protect your furniture and look cool at the same time i think that is it for this month um our word of the month this month is summer and we're looking forward yeah. to it and we are so looking forward to welcoming you back in the store we are absolutely. hopefully too before we meet again yes absolutely take care enjoy Thanks. the weather bye now